You are watching coverage of the Fnatic Play Open Tournament, cast by myself, Total Biscuit. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Shoutcraft right here with Nama in the Green Drunks playing Terran right here on the Metalopolis versus his opponent, Adol Scott, in the Orange Drunks playing Protoss. Hmm, this is going to be interesting, isn't it? Again, as we've said before, we've got these high-seeded players that have this tendency of arriving up against each other in a best of one single elimination and that is the caliber of this tournament that's just the number of people we've got in it Hook is playing as well we've already seen Demarga play we've seen Brad OK play who actually got knocked out as you saw earlier on the stream yeah, it, it's, it's pretty dangerous, you know? It, it's a risky, risky venture to go on. TLO also played, as we saw previously, who is advancing, as far as I can tell, with fairly minimal effort. Admittedly, it's going to get a lot harder for him later on. Bear in mind, he's playing random in this tournament as well. Alice Scott opens up with a pylon. A very, very risky maneuver, I'm told, for the Protoss to build a pylon. No, really isn't. Supply Deeper up for Nama. Again, you know, once again, risky maneuver. Eh, you never know. I have no idea what lurks inside those damn things. I would love to know what is actually in that supply depot. It looks like they're cooking pies, if I'm honest. I mean, look at that. You know, little bits of fat off it right there. You can see the little particle effects on the stream, you know, as long as you're not watching in low res. Nice sort of inviting glow inside the supply depot. And what will you find? Look, see, your team got a chimney. See, it's blatantly pies. They are making pies. There's no question about that. And I'm talking about meat pies first, so none of your ridiculous sugary American dessert pies. Oh, God. That's not a real pie, folks. It's not, unless it's got chunks of meat like manly men inside it. Then we really, really do not care. Gateway coming down for Adol Scott. Pretty damn normal. No question about that. There's your barracks. Not bothering to wall off. A lot of players don't against the Protoss. Because, again, you're just putting something right at the ramp right there. They can get sniped off very easily. Problematic. Oh, I've got stalkers. I'm going to take some free buildings from you. Enjoy that. There you go. Adol Scott... Adel Stott, what? Adel Scott alleviates his supply block. Cybernetic score coming down for him as well. Economically, you're not going to see a big difference between the two at this stage of the game. I mean, Nama actually might decide to block himself off anyway. Either that or just create a little bit of a choke point, which is always good against early zealot aggression. Doesn't really matter so much against everything else. Adel Scott looks for the scout. Should we call him Adel Scout? We could call him Adel Scout, but there you go. Factory coming straight down for Nama. Nice and quick into that. Gives them a lot of variety, a lot of potential on this particular map to go a huge, huge selection of different builds. Ah, uh, Nama finally discovers his nemesis. Is he going to be able to get away from the Zealot? The answer is yes, because SCVs have rocket boosters. You don't think a Zealot can deal with that? Uh, I can catch it. No, I can't, because I got freaking rocket boosters, damn it. You know, I'd, I'd be... Surprised that they don't actually go faster than that, but I suppose that would make them very imbalanced, wouldn't it? You know, have them fly across the map. If you ever play Dawn of War 2, you have jump pack SCVs. That'll be freaking wonderful. And tremendously overpowered. <laughs> there you go. That's pretty much the theme of Dawn of War. There you go. Starport coming down. The build is called 111. It is very, very easy to comprehend. Build one of each, gives you a lot of variety, and then you can react pretty much to what your opponent is doing. What is Adol Scott doing right now? Well, he is expanding pretty damn rapidly. He is feeling confident that he's not going to be attacked anytime soon, which is, again, extremely likely. The build that's coming up right here is not designed for early aggression. You're investing an awful lot of resources in technology. It's a very high-tech build. You push your way through very rapidly. There's the swap around, which indicates to me we're going to be seeing Banshees sooner rather than later. Would make sense, considering the spare tech lab. There you go. Of course, the only other real possibility is the the, the, uh, the Total Biscuit build, which is fast battle cruiser, but it only works in TBT, so don't do that. There's your cloaking field coming up right there, but Adel Scott does have robotics facility rolling, so if he's got any sense, he'll leave an observer around, and that cloak won't make too much of a difference to him. Another gateway coming down, third gateway, robotics... I, let's see, Robotics Facility actually going up before the other two gateways, which, again, is a sign of confidence there, as far as I'm concerned, from Adel Scott. Doesn't think he's going to be attacked anytime soon. And look at that as well. That's a kind of neat trick, isn't it? Actually does a bunch of distance mining, but then stops them from running back and just waits for that to complete. So an instant boost of about 40 or 50 minerals. And yeah, it does make a bit of a difference right there. Nama, you can't have that, I'm afraid. It's just not going to happen. What is going on over here? Supply Depot coming down, just to make sure that he can't get any sneaky pylons or drops in there. Starport is pumping out that Banshee, but it's not going to be out before the Observer. It really depends on what Adel Scott decides to do with the Observers. Observers are so cheap now, but they are still a little bit heavy on gas. Minerals-wise, cost basically nothing. They're cheaper than they were, so you can justify maybe having one or two out. And he's going to need it if that Cloak Banshee comes in. 
What is he aware of? Well, absolutely nothing right now. He knows where his opponent is, but he hasn't made any effort to scout the ramp. And he would have just got shot to pieces if he'd done that anyway. So that would be a waste. Doesn't really want to bother with that. Cloaking has now finished. Single Banshee is on the field. Where is it? We're looking for it right now. Coming around the side. There you go. Pylon being placed down there to avoid that. Drop potential. Nothing happening right now, but there's the cloak. Where's the Observer? Did the Observer actually leave? Is it making its way across right now, or is the Observer actually in the base? Yes, it is. There you go. Oh, dear. Nicely done there. Adel Scott actually proving that getting that robotics facility so early was a great idea, and he was able to deal with that Banshee approach. Now Nama's going to have to expand by the looks of it. Already knows that that Banshee is not going to work. He's got another one coming out anyway. Might as well finish the damn thing. Continues to push the Banshees out, but honestly... Adel Scott's going to be able to repulse that very easily. And now is going for a second expansion. That is so quick right here. On the eight-minute mark, grabs a second expansion with the Protoss. Unusual, honestly, and he will be two expansions ahead of Nama. But Nama does have this Orbital Command Center set up, and he does have a good bunker line so he can sit there, being pretty damn defensive until he's got a critical mass of units to go and bash on the door of Adel Scott. Another gateway coming down. Two more gateways. There you go. Adults got into five gateways. It's also pretty common, really. Five gateways. When have I seen five gateways? White Ra. White Ra loves five gateways. Admittedly, he tends to do that on one base, which is a little extreme. Adults got a little bit more conservative by the looks of it. Looking for a great economic advantage. We'll have a look at it and see if he does have it. Well, of course he does. He is 14 probes ahead of his opponent. Technically, he's 48 probes ahead because, you know, Terran can't build probes. But we'll let that one slide for the moment. His economy is very, very strong indeed. He does have the third gas. Hasn't gone for the fourth yet. No sign right now of Colossus building Immortals at the time being. And a Twilight Council coming up as well. Could be leading into possibly Dark Templar or, of course, High Templar. Both are a very real possibility. Two Banshees on the field. A little bit of harassment going on right there. Which should be pretty effective, honestly. The Cloak is up. Takes three. It's going to take at least five or six, I would think, for free right here. But there you go. There's the flank around the side. Warping of the Stalkers. Worthwhile. Can he get away? He can. So that was definitely worth it. Blink Stalker could be a very real possibility here from Adel Scott. Simply to deal with that continued aerial harassment. Blink, very powerful right there. Only one Banshee on the field, but a second one being built right now. And a variety pack of pretty much everything coming up for Nama. Looking to gain that map control. Rolling forward with Marines. Does he have Stim? He does not, but it is on the way. No sign of Medivacs either. How many Marauders has he got? More to the point. He's only got the two, so he's really relying on the tanks to bring the Stalkers down in large numbers. That Immortal could be problematic for those tanks, of course. But it will be torn apart by the Marines, so not too worried about that. Bear in mind that... If you're a newer player, you probably don't really understand the principle of it too much. But don't go on unit by unit counters because, generally speaking, army will not consist of a single unit. So it's really not necessary to say, oh, well, you know what? Marines counter immortals. Yep, we, we know this. You know, we know Marines counter immortals. It comes down to the point of how effective is this army composition. Well, Nama actually with a missile turret and that offensive sensor tower. I've seen this before, actually. If you saw in a recent Day 9 Daily, Nama loves this. Offensive sensor tower gives him good visibility on where his opponents are actually moving, so he can deploy siege tanks accordingly. It's a really, really great job, and he's actually using a Banshee as opposed to a Viking now for a scout. There you go. Got the stim pack, combat shield on the way. Many cannons, left side and even side, coming up for Adel Scott. If we look at the unit count, it's very much in favor of Adel Scott by an incredibly significant margin, and I have to wonder whether or not all of this nonsense that's going on right here is going to matter at all. Sensor Tower is up right now. Adel Scott's going to push this pretty damn hard. There's the Banshee Cloak. Does he have the Observer with it? Well, lots of damage could come in here. But if I'm totally honest, Adel Scott just has the numbers beyond anything. Needs to take the Siege Tanks out. They're doing, of course, the most damage. But they will be taking... There you go, folks. Nama just got knocked out. Unbelievable. Nama got knocked out right there by immense macroeconomic play by Adel Scott. Adel Scott advances in a very powerful fashion with that quick third base. Nama just couldn't deal with it. Simple as that. Continues to produce the Banshees and... Hell, what a lot of foresight there with that early robotics that allowed him to get out the Observer, which countered that initial Banshee harassment, stopped his economy from being blunted, which was absolutely critical.